Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast, a weekly show where two, just two, yeah, old guys talk about old games. Back to basics. I'm your bearded host, Tyler, and... On Facebook, Aaron C. Neal requested more stories about the Dollar House. So, the Dollar House is like, it's a grab bag of my youth. Because a lot of things, as I grew up, happened in the Dollar House. We didn't live there very long, but it's that age of like, I think I was there from when I was 14 till I was 16. And a lot of shit happens between... That's a lot of masturbation time. That's a lot of masturbation. That is... You're going to try to do math, aren't you? I guess you? maybe it was earlier than that. The first time I ever masturbated was in the dollar house. But that's, a, that's an entirely different story. Well, I'm not, I know it's not story I'm going to tell this episode now. <laughs> <laughs> because I believe I masturbated for the first time in that house. That's where my dad caught me masturbating. I lost my virginity in that house. So just a lot of first-time ejaculates just going on in that house. <laughs> it's a good house. It's a good house. It's a slimy house. But it's a good house. <laughs> As I was growing up, my parents, even now, I'm 29, and my parents have had two sets of furniture, ever. The whole time you've been alive? Well, I guess three now, but yeah, the whole time I've been alive. Uh, The longest was this old brown, super comfortable but ugly, and then they got a uh, set of green furniture, like fluffy, poofy green furniture. You might recognize it because it's in my house now. I do. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the large green chair that I have with the ottoman is where I lost my virginity in that dollar house. <laughs> I got a new so, favorite seat. So, so that, that place where you sit all the time when you come over, lost my virginity there. Nearly suffocated my girlfriend in the process. Because <laughs> you've sat in that chair, you kind of sink back into it. So yes, everyone, this is the story of how I lost my virginity. Uh, my girlfriend of quite some time. It was very spontaneous. It was me, her, and then sort of friend of the show. He's never been on Brandon Eves. I couldn't drive at the time, but he could. So I was like, hey, I think we're going to do this tonight. Would you go get me a condom? So, you know, he is the only person that drove, drove down the road to the gas station, got a condom, came back to my front door. And he was like, hey, man, I got these papers for your homework. And he does the high five slap, passes me one off keeps the other like eight out of the box and puts them in his golf bag and they expire before he uses them. So he gives me that and everything works out. But we were in that big fluffy green chair and, you know, you sink back into it. So she's... Where were your parents? uh, Mom was out of town. (laughs) (laughs) They were in the kitchen. It was weird. She was gone somewhere and my dad was working in the garage. But at that house, the garage was at the end of the road. We had an intercom system is how we talked back and forth between the house and the garage. My dad was cool in the regard that if I was there with a girl, he would usually buzz on the intercom to let me know, hey, I'm coming to the house. Wow. You know, pull out. I'm coming home. Yeah, he totally knew what was up there. Yeah. So she's laying on the green chair and I'm on top. You know, I don't even know what's going on. And before I realize we're in the act and... I'm going to town and my chest is pressed into her face because I'm on top and she's sinking further and further back into the chair, chest in there, surrounded (laughs) by by chair. She's she cannot breathe until like I finally like take a break. Her face is red and she's sweaty and hair sticking everywhere. And she's just (gasps) And that's the only way she can glide. Um, hey, I really am glad you told that story because I didn't have anything coming into this, but now I do. I'm Dave, your bespectacled host, and I remember the first time I masturbated was in Las Vegas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because I was like some kind of hobo at the junkyard just picking through shit. Because like in Vegas, I haven't been since I was 12 when we went. And I don't know if it's changed, but when I went, it was just like 
the streets were littered with free pornography. Yep, it has. It, I went about like two year a year ago. Yeah, has not changed. And holy shit, that is uh, a really awesome place to be when you're 12 years old. Because I'm just like collecting all this shit off the street, just like grabbing as much of it as I can, just shove it in my pockets. Josh Nance did the same thing when he was oh, really when he was like fourteen. He did this <laughs> like every time they always they hand you out that porn. He just had a huge stack. Oh cat. man, yeah, dude, it was my treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember holding on to him and bringing him back to the hotel. And my parents were like, um, "We're gonna go check out. I think they were gonna go check out a show or something." They're like, "Do you want to come?" I was like, "No." They're like, "You want? Let's give you some money for the arcade then." I was like, "Okay, awesome." So I take the money for the arcade and they leave. And um, you know what? I think I'm gonna look. I'm gonna go over my treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see what I got. And uh, you know how things go. You're looking through your. Uh-uh. You're going. Uh-uh. You're looking through your pornography litter. <laughs> yep. Yep. Stuff starts moving. You start start checking things out. And were you worried? I was worried the first time. I thought I peed in a really cool yeah, way. Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know what the <laughs> fuck was going on. Cause I did not expect that. Like I like they tell you this shit like your parents explain where babies come from, but mm. not in enough detail that you can like kind of expect what coming feels like. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the that's the start of the, the slippery slope and this is the rest of my life. Yeah. I remember I tried it before, but I kind of like I masturbated sarcastically. <laughs> because like I had been like How is that possible? I heard in middle school like God, Oh, oh, this feels so good. And basically people would make the motion. I remember like I was hard one time and I tried it and I was like <laughs> It's, I don't know, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel like anything. Then something clicked. No, nothing happened because I wasn't into it. I just, I did it sarcastically. And it wasn't, it wasn't until like. It's not a state of mind. I, I, it was. When you're. That's your, that's the. Or next. skeptically. I, I masturbate skeptically. <laughs> the the Tadfog bumper sticker. <laughs> Masturbation, a state of mind. <laughs> nothing to do with video games. <laughs> And then, then when I tried it sincerely, then it was super effective. <laughs> <laughs> you might have had a little wine before. <laughs> nice lasagna. <laughs> That's the bumper sticker. Masturbate skeptically. Masturbate sincerely. <laughs> Just... Before we get into too much stuff and more masturbation talk on <laughs> here on masturbation. There, are, there, are, there aren't any girls here to keep us from talking about our dicks. So. We did good. We were very good for two episodes. <laughs> now it just built up. We, we just got very a, good. <laughs> we just got gooder build up. It's just like, <laughs> um, I want to mention a few things before we get started. There is a Kickstarter for a licensed river city ransom sequel called river city ransom underground. Tyler, have you heard of this? I have. After I saw you plug it, then I supported it as well. Nice. I hope this happens because it looks awesome. And thanks to Matt Barger for bringing this to my attention because I didn't know about it until he shared it on Facebook. But if you're a fan of old games, and I'm sure you're familiar with River City Ransom, and these guys are making a real deal licensed sequel to the game. And I'll have a link to that in the show notes in case anybody wants to pledge. Hope it actually happens. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't see how it wouldn't. They also talked about it on Reddit, and I read all the comments, because I believe it was plugged on, like, R, shut up and take my money. Um, everybody was like, this looks so cool, but the first three minutes of this video are so cringeworthy. Really? Yeah, a lot of people the- thought the guy was just too... Uh, oh, really? I... I, that says a lot about me. I thought he was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was la- like, I was slapping my knee and just laughing. <laughs> But I guess I'm nerdy like that. I'm not nearly as cool as 80% of those Redditors pretend they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Well, I think probably a video link on a subreddit typically for, not for video games is, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's why. Then no, no one probably like, what the fuck's this douchebag doing? I thought, they don't, I thought he was hilarious. Our gaming probably would have loved it. I really did. Also, Matt brought to my attention that in the Kirby's Avalanche episode, we were Curious about what do you call someone who lives in Iowa? Mm-hmm, it's an mm-hmm. Iowan. 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 Okay. So okay. the well, more what, you know. I'm assuming he went to like the town town square. What am, where am I thinking of? But the state fair. State fair. Wherever everything about this town is held, all the records. City hall. City hall. Assuming he went to city hall 
and the record ha- has a documented the record store <laughs> has a documented source of a national declaration for Iowans. Matt, could you f- could you fax that to me, please? We, we, yeah, we need your source on that, Matt Barker. <laughs> And and don't try to pull that been living in Iowa your whole life shit. That yep, doesn't fly. No. Nope, nope. We need we need something certified. <laughs> then we just know what you like to be called. <laughs> Iowan Matt. <laughs> Since you brought up alternate business after wishing Drew Rowland a birthday last week, uh, another friend of the show also had a birthday, uh, Joanne Livingston. James Livingston was like, hey, hey, it's Joanne's birthday. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably call her. I want talking on the phone. How about I'll just wish her happy birthday and we're in the Lion King episode. So... Happy birthday, Joanne. You collected the $200, right? Yes. The $200 of, fee. Of course. For, mm-hmm. Okay, that's what we That's what we charge. Right. Officially. <laughs> um, also, it's Aaron Carpenter's birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, so, Aaron Carpenter. Happy I think birthday, right Aaron now, tonight, right. today, he's having a birthday party while we're recording. Yeah, sorry we're skipping your birthday party to record. Yeah, that and we both have work very early in the morning. We'll catch him sometime this weekend. Or just do this, happy birthday, Aaron Carpenter. That's what you get. <laughs> that's your gift. Take it or leave it. <laughs> You been playing anything this week, Tyler? I played a little bit, but mostly watched uh, Nicole Nance play Chrono Trigger. Oh, yes. So she's been either Meg and I go to their house or they come over to our house once a week. And she plays through Josh and Mai's favorite Super Nintendo games. Meg has already done this in the past. Before we got married, you know, Meg played Final Fantasy VI, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, Super Mario RPG, and most of Final Fantasy IV. By your request, right? By my request. I was like, if you want a ring, then you're going to be, you know, okay. And they then pass your quizzes afterward. <laughs> so now Nicole is playing through. She's done Super Mario RPG. And then now she's on the Chrono Trigger, which she did not like Super Mario RPG at all. It was like pulling a mule across the finish line. She did not want to. She hated that game. She's sincerely enjoying Chrono Trigger, though. Good. It's been a few times that she'd be like, that's been four hours? Shit. Well, yeah, it's what a good game will do to you. It's a great game. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about it in a year. Mm, I know, I can't wait. Longer than that. So that's what I've been doing. What have you been playing? You know what I've been playing. You've seen my Steam activity, I'm willing to bet. Or maybe you haven't. I haven't. You haven't been on Steam this week? Mm-mm. I can't remember what episode it was, but I mentioned a while back. I think it was Pilot Wings. I think in the Pilot Wings episode, I mentioned that I was playing the Rogue Legacy demo. Oh, uh, yep. And I loved it. I uh, shamefully put off buying the full retail version of it until earlier this week and i bought it finally and it is just as good and better than the demo Mm. um i have spent a lot of time playing this game so much that it took a lot to pull myself away from it to play the lion king to go to work yeah, actually, I kind of <laughs> took a long lunch earlier this week because I got a little wrapped up in the game because I played on my lunch break. Um, it is a hell of a lot of fun. I'm sure it will go on sale. It's going on sale before. That's what I'm waiting for. If you don't have anything to play and you're looking for a great game, I certainly wouldn't have a problem paying the full price for this game. And It's $15? It's 15 bucks. It's that good. It is totally worth $15. I mean, or forty nine nine. Sorry, right? Forty nine nine. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's get our facts straight. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Um, I'd pay more for it, honestly. I think they could have made it more expensive, and I think it would have been worth it. I've played sixty dollar retail games that were a lot less enjoyable than this fifteen dollar game. Mm. I love it. Playing it on the PC. I've, I've done that with a lot of games recently, with a lot of like AAA titles and things like that. I'm enjoying cheaper games on Steam than I am full AAA sixty dollar retail games. Yeah, me too. I I don't know if that's a hallmark of the indie games that are coming out or if it's just me changing as I get older, but I'm in the same boat. I, I agree. We enjoy the, the value. The value is also a fun component. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. The circus of value. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of when you said value. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. I'm still in Emperor of Thrones, so Emperor of Thorns, Emperor of Thrones, Emperor of Thorns. So I don't have anything new on my book list report. I'm not super into the book, honestly. There's nothing that's after last week's call. I may just go ahead and put Emperor. I hate to stop reading a book when I once I've started, but I may go ahead and do start doing uh, the Black Company. Oh, really? Pretty soon. So that's and pretty then, rare for. I got mad at Meg for getting halfway through Name of the Wind and then just putting it down for four or five months. And then we got in a fight as I had to like, finish it, just finish it, just finish it. And she finished it and was very mad at me for the rest of the day. And then the rest of 
Um, Sanderson, Brandon Sanderson has good stuff coming out eventually. I'm just kind of floating in audiobook territory until yeah. more Sanderson stuff is released. Can't remember who called with the the audiobook recommendations. Yuki's but, cousin. So Yuki's cousin, I recommend to you in the meantime to read The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. That is his reply to Robert Jordan. This is his magnum opus of 14 books. And only one is out, and it's fan-fucking-tastic. Hmm. Get in on the ground floor. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> Go ahead and get in now so you only have to wait 20 years to finish it. These fucking, all these fantasy books, man, they're like pyramid schemes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not totally wrong. <laughs> the first book's got to be really good. Yep. And then you can take, like, I don't know, four or five books. Or, yeah, okay. <laughs> A little below average. <laughs> and then you got to then you got to do another good one. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, you can George R. R. Martin and like three fantastic ones and then just half-ass two more and then take like six years more and promise <laughs> promise the other one. All right, The Lion King. The Lion King is what IGN's 66th 66th ranked Super Nintendo mm-hmm. game. Tyler. Yes, Dave. You just want to go ahead and do beers and glasses? Yep. And move on to shout outs and phone calls. Yep. <laughs> and then their 65th rank game, R Type 3. Um, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Did you ever play this game as a kid? I did not. Is this because you just didn't have any interest in it? Or did you know that it was a game? I think I had heard of it, but even as a kid, I stayed away generally, with very few exceptions. Games based on movies. Yeah. That's a good rule of thumb, I think. And the only notable exception was Aladdin. I played Aladdin on the Genesis. Uh, I had a friend who I spoke of uh, in middle school who had a Genesis, and I remember Aladdin being really good. And I remember the Genesis and Super Nintendo versions are pretty different. Oh, are they? Mm-hmm. Now, now, I was excited to play Aladdin, but now I'm kind of concerned. No, we'll see. No, we'll see if it's good, better or worse than we can compare. I played this as a kid. What did you think of it as a kid? But I played it for the Game Gear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a completely fucking different game. <laughs> like, they tried to keep it the same. Like, it's quote unquote similar, but there are some pretty noticeable differences. This game was hard for the Game Gear. I remember never being able to get past the Stampede level. Mm hmm. Which is very different than the Stampede level in the Super Nintendo version. Oh, really? Because I hear the Stampede level was a complaint of people who I'd talked to about the game. Like, oh, good luck on that fucking Stampede level. I want to talk about the Stampede <laughs> level. But before that, there's something I'd like to do, if you don't mm-hmm. mind. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This little segment that, that I like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Yeah. It's kind of a long one, so I apologize in advance. Guys, The Lion King It's a video game based on Disney's popular animated film, which I can only assume was also called The Lion King. I don't know. (laughs) The title was published by Virgin Interactive in 1994 and came out on a shitload of platforms. Super Nintendo, NES, Game Boy, PC, Sega Mega Drive, Amiga, Master System, and Game Gear. Fuck. Yes. Um, The... Nintendo version, the the NES version, and Master System versions of the game were never released in North America. Uh, Damn. Um, The game follows this character named Simba. I don't know. Simba. Simba? Simba. (laughs) Follows him on his journey from a young, carefree cub. I wish everyone in the tap on it, you could see Dave acting out his Simba (laughs) pressure with his claws. (laughs) It follows him all the way to the battle with his uncle Scar as an adult. It's a side-scrolling platform game where you have to leap, climb, run, and descend from platform to platform. There's an exception to this, and that's what we were just talking about, the, the stampede level. Mm-hmm. It's notorious. And in the, the Game Gear version, that's where I, I never got past that level ever. Uh, in the Game Gear version, it's side-scrolling, just like the rest of the game. And it's really pathetic, man, because it really doesn't come across as a stampede at all. There are these ledges that you have to run and jump. You have to jump from ledge to ledge. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's gaps. And what's going on underneath these ledges is the stampede, which the stampede is represented by a single wildebeest <laughs> going across <laughs> periodically. <laughs> Sometimes they pair up, but it's it's all flat you know mm-hmm. so it's just it's not very fun it was very hard i never got past it hmm. the super nintendo stampede level i finished like that it's very cool it's cool i think it's my favorite part of the game 
And I was really surprised because it took me like three tries and I was through it. Yeah. Unlike any other part of the game, except maybe the first level. Yeah, that's true. Okay, before I really start talking about how I felt about levels, I think when I started playing Lion King, I was like, I really hope this is good. I really hope I sit down. I really hope I love this game Mm -hmm. because I think I'm just starting to drag down on, on Matt Barger's psyche. Because he got, I got a little bit of hate him, just like all oh, the cloud of negativity that is Tyler. I was like, was I a- haven't, I haven't liked some of the games recently. Mm-hmm. Some of the games recently. I was okay with Mega Man X three. I felt good. I mean, it, it's not compared to the rest of the series, not as good. What's the last game Stand- we talked about that you liked? That I really liked. That you genuinely enjoyed. Let me look through. I mean, I enjoyed X three. <laughs> literally go through um, notes. <laughs> yeah, go through my notes. Uh, I what I understood a populace. <laughs> that doesn't count. Um, Jungle Strike, Rock and Roll Racing, Pocky and Rocky. So my point, my point Pocky here. Pocky and Rocky is- Two, <laughs> <laughs> number seventy three, and we're on number sixty six. <laughs> so what my point here is that maybe Matt's not too far off. I think he got angry with our Illusion of Gaia review. <laughs> I also think it, I also think his comment was meant to be endearing. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah. I just felt the hate and the venom yeah. in Matt Barger's no, face. Don't, don't take it the wrong way. I want I wanted to like this for you, Matt Barger. I wanted to come in and just be a ray of positivity <laughs> and sunshine into your life. I'm gonna be like those gray creatures in Rainbow Bright's world, just coming in and taking all the color away. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is going to be a rough episode because I am usually on board with the game that we're playing. Mm-hmm. I'm usually, I feel like I'm usually the guy who is like, you know, that wasn't the best game, but I liked it. I didn't like Lion King. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right mm-hmm. now. I didn't mm-hmm. like it. It does have some good qualities. Mm-hmm. There are some things about the game that I really like and I think they nailed. But this game, let me say this. This game is hard. Yeah, it is. And, yeah, it is. And it's hard for the wrong reasons. It's not because it was designed to be hard. I feel like it's hard because it wasn't developed well. Mm. I'll give you an example. One of my most frustrating moments while playing this game is there is a the second level, which is either called Roar at Monkeys or I can't wait to be king. <laughs> because they kind of give you two they kind of give you two little things. One kind of seems like a hint, roar at monkeys, but it's in the title font and it comes first. So, I don't know. But anyway, there's a there's a part that had to be a post edit. Like, who's going to figure this out? Put just put it in somewhere. I don't care where it is. Roar at the monkeys. No one's getting through this. Um, there's a part in this level that I don't know if they thought it would be a good idea to like take from Battletoads Turbo Tunnel, where you jump on. There's a part in the game where Simba jumps on this ostrich, and it starts running, and it's com- this is completely new and different and out of the blue. There's an up arrow, which mm-hmm. is like, okay, I don't know, I don't know. So I press up, and then you know, I run smack into an obstacle, which is a, a naturally a neon pink hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You want to avoid those in nature. <laughs> right. So that happens once. I'm like, okay, well, pressing up obviously didn't work, so I should probably jump. So you da 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 do it, jump. Okay, great. Then there's another arrow, down. Okay, I press down, great. And then eventually it gets to a point where it stops giving you arrows. Mm-hmm. And you had to figure it out on your own, which is fine. Except I had no idea there are bird nests in these trees in the mm-hmm. background that look like they're part of the background. Mm-hmm. So I had no idea. I went through this time after time after time, having no idea what was killing me. And finally, I was like, fuck this. And I got up. And I quit playing for a bit, and then the next day I came back, and for some reason it was just like, I wonder if it's a fucking bird nest. Yep, that's what it was, bird nest every that, time. That's why, because I was texting you while we were playing, like this is the first game in a long time that we both just had to <laughs> sit on the controller, just walk away, just to try to calm the <laughs> fuck down and not break anything in your house. I didn't have a Professor Layton... Like I didn't have a late, box box fit. Yeah, I didn't have a latent rage. <laughs> but it was one of those where it was just like and again, thank thank God for Rogue Legacy because it was just kinda like, eh, Lion King, fuck you. Go play Rogue Legacy for an hour. <laughs> Come back. Cause I cause Meg was a few times like, just, just stop playing it. Just quit. And I would just pace around the house, just <laughs> near nearly broke the controller once, just <laughs> <laughs> But did do you agree? Did it feel like the game was hard, but not... It's hard. It's not challenging. 
Like it wasn't, it felt to me like it wasn't designed to be challenging. It's just that the gameplay got in the way to the point where it would made the game difficult to play. Cause like the platforming aspect, anytime I had to swing on a hippo's tail yeah, or swing uh, on a fucking elephant bone or swing on fucking anything, it was just like, I'm going to jump at this thing. I may or may not get it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Simba has four limbs. I don't, do I need to try to hit this ledge with my head? Or yeah, the part of Simba that attaches onto things that swing are not his paws. It's something else it's like on his, his body. It's like it's like a couple inches before his face or something. It's yeah. just, ugh, I hated that. But I feel like it's hard, as opposed to being hard for one reason, I feel like it was designed to be hard, and I feel like it's hard because of poor, poor design. I think it's hard on both fronts. Mostly, <laughs> I think Aladdin was notoriously easy. So I feel like Lion King is that's Disney's passive aggressive. It's like, fine, that's too easy. You thought, oh, that shit was okay, fine. Fuck you, motherfuckers. We're going to make the super hard and release it on eight fucking platforms. Fuck y'all. Bend over for Uncle Walt. (laughs) (laughs) The platforming and some of the puzzle elements and then some of the fighting. I feel like it's, it's, yeah, it's designed to be a hard game. But also, like, if you're going to have... A game that's going to be difficult, like it is. I have no problem with the game being difficult, but it needs to be handled right, like Super Meat Boy. If it's right. going to be a difficult game, the controlling, the the movement needs to be tight. Yes, for any platformer, mm-hmm. like that's the key to a platformer. The original Super Mario Brothers, much older than The Lion King, it's a much better game for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's because the controls on that game are amazing even for today i mean i played platformers where it's like the fucking controls aren't as tight as super mario brothers Mm -hmm. because yeah simba is just if it were a steering wheel it just got a ridiculous amount of play in it because it's just you can do all sorts of stuff before you actually move or land on anything it's just yeah and And when simba dies the animation kills me because it's like 15 seconds of him flopping around and then falls (laughs) down and that's what that was brilliant about Super Meat Boy is when you die, you immediately right go back. back. There's no time to get frustrated. You get kicked, you're right back into it. So games that have that little cutesy animation drive me up the wall. At least when it's older Simba, he just falls over. That's <laughs> yeah, much quicker. And he makes that face right before he faints, and it's just mm-hmm. like, oh, I just want to fucking reach through. It and just, just makes you your so ass. mad. <laughs> but ah. Uh, The controls are unforgivable, which is a shame because it was obvious to me that they took a lot of time and care to make this game look good. Mm -hmm. Because I really do think that they do a good job of making this game true to the movie. Mm -hmm. The characters are all well animated. The voice work in the game sounds like the voices from the movie. Yeah, the sounds and music and everything like that, top notch. It's fantastic, but... I, I just couldn't get past the gameplay. The gameplay, I thought, was mm-hmm. really, really bad. Because the part where you had to grab onto hippo tails and swing across the water made me frustrated, but I didn't rage quit over it. The first time I got angry and rage quit was Elephant Graveyard, and you're having to fight the hyenas. At the end? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, like, because the hyenas, they're invulnerable. If you touch any part of them, Simba, you know, his health meter goes down oh, a substantial I, amount. I'm like, it sounded like you were talking to him. If you get anywhere near them, Sim- Simba. Simba. <laughs> Simba. Get away from the hyena. <laughs> He's going to bite you. But you can't hurt them until they get tired. So you have to try to evade their attacks until they stop and pant. Right. And at the end of the elephant graveyard, you're trapped in a sm- very small enclosed space with two of them. And that took me 45 minutes of just... Going back and back and back and back. Another part of the platform that drove me crazy mm-hmm. was when you have to scale a ledge going up. Yes. In earlier levels, all you have to do is just press up and you kind of jump from side to side. But then eventually it's not one ledge left to right ledge. It's just all on the left. Uh-huh. So then you have to jump, jump to the right, move right. Move left real quick. Yeah, so you <laughs> yeah. just see Simba doing this weird cat flop like the... <laughs> Like the what's the it's an old E bombs world video. I'm a cat. I'm a kid cat. Yeah, dance, 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 he does dance, the dance, 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 dance yeah. animation where he goes from ledge to ledge. Well, and that's a problem with the with the game design because it makes you feel. I know exactly what you're talking about. It makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. What the sprite is telling you, 
doesn't match what you should be doing mm-hmm. because there should be some kind of visual indicator that don't worry, bro, you're doing this right. <laughs> As yep. opposed to, it felt like every time I did something in this game, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> we're going <gonna> to try <laughs> We'll <it."> see. <laughs> All right, this is a petty thing to bitch about, but you're eating bugs before you meet Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking stickler. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that just that took me out of the immersive experience. You are, you are not stopping in between levels to suckle at your mom's teeth. <laughs> game over. <laughs> no. Nope. There's no Nala in the game. I don't think I ever saw her. And this is later on. I don't remember any part in the movie where Simba mauls leopards to death. <laughs> I know. I don't either. I was <laughs> trying. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie, but like the baboon, what's is uh, Raf- Rafiki? Is that uh-huh. his name? You like how I did that where I pretended I wasn't sure what his name was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that old oh, bad you know. monk. Brr. Simba saves him in the movie, right? When he grows up. Does he save him from leopards? I don't. That's the only thing I, I don't remember think that. Because in the game where you're fighting the leopards, Rafiki shows up and hits some thorns. Yeah, because they're. <laughs> It's weird because it's like you're fighting the multiple man version of the leopard. I thought the game was glitched. I thought the game was glitched because these leopards just fucking kept coming. Kept, yeah. The animation is weird because young Simba doesn't have claws. He just has the roar and the jump. And then adult Simba, you get to have claws and a pounce you attack. You feel badass for once. It's it's much, I think the game got a lot easier once you're adult Simba as opposed to kid Simba. But whenever the, yeah, they come at you, the animation, you see his claws come out, hit the leopard in the face, and I swear you see like blood and chunks of flesh fly off <laughs> as it, as it backs that. up. Look at, look at it again. It's, <laughs> it's got to be like leopard skin. Simba just tearing part of their <laughs> face off. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, they just keep spawning in this arch of thorns, <laughs> and like, they'll keep going until you kill like eight of them, <laughs> and then Rafiki chops it down. They're like Hydra heads. <laughs> Every time you kill a leopard, two sprout in its place. But that's an interesting mechanic we hadn't talked about really directly, is that for most of the game, you play as Cub Simba. Mm-hmm. And then you get to a certain point in the game, I think it's the Hakuna Matata level, mm-hmm. and after Where you that, fight the gorilla. Yeah. The girl that throws coconuts? coconuts? <laughs> so. Yeah. That was another frustrating battle. God, that was. That, that, it didn't make any sense to me for a long time. Like, That's exactly what. Yeah. What makes it frustrating is that. Is this a boss fight? Like, I didn't even realize it was a boss fight. I was just like, oh, a new, a new enemy, a gorilla. Mm-hmm. And then, like most of the enemies in the game, I'm just going to avoid it <laughs> because it's a <laughs> hell of a lot easier to avoid this shit than it is to fight it. Yep. Elephant Graveyard. I just fucking raced through that, man. Yep. Just raced to it until the end where I had to fight those hyenas. I did too. And then it was like, oh, now what? (laughs) Because you can, I know the golden bugs restored your health, but there were a lot of other bugs. I have no idea what they did. Except, well, the Black Widow. Right. You eat a Black Widow, you just die. Yes. I think they were there so that Simba could say, cool. (laughs) (laughs) That's the mechanic. It serves. You eat the golden one, it refills your health. All the rest, he says, cool. And it's a nice little <laughs> mm. treat. <laughs> Just like the fucking mini game after the first level, which, what the fuck? I didn't get it after the first level. I got oh, it really? after several levels before I got to a bug hunter level. There's also one where you play as Puma and Timon drops bugs from the top. I never got that. What? I only played as Toomba. Toomba? <laughs> Toomba. Toomba. <laughs> I, like I only it. played as Timon running and catching bugs. I never played as Pumba. Yeah, there's this there was this weird mini stage right after the first level and Timon drops bugs and like you have to run back and forth as uh, Pumba to eat them all. Why does and he gotta be a dick? Why can't you just give his friend some food? I know. What's I thought you were gonna say why is Pumba not eating dick? <laughs> 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 I mean, clearly they're both homosexual. Then not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Lane, who voices Timon, is, but... Pumbaa's definitely the bottom in that relationship. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. But my point is... I think if there's one thing we take from the line, game, <laughs> <laughs> it's, an it's that lesson. Pumbaa's a power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we learned something. <laughs> if, if we learned anything today, <laughs> please take away that Pumbaa's a power bottom. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there's there's this weird mini game. I tried it a few times, and the first time I was only able to eat like ten bugs, and nothing happened. 
Mm-hmm. You miss one bug and it's game, you know, game over. Next stage. I was like, there's got to be something to this. There's got to be a reward. So I kept doing it until I ate like 30 bugs. And Puma goes something like, that was tasty. And that's it. <laughs> Like that's you don't get an extra no extra odds or anything. You don't get an extra light. You don't get a larger health bar next stage or anything. It's just you get this little sound clip. Um, did you play on normal difficulty? No, I played on easy difficulty. That might be why it I was played still... on. I played on normal. Maybe it's one of those fucked up things where it's like you only get access to these special stages if you play on a higher difficulty. Mm. I didn't play on easy because I was afraid of the whole. We're not going to give you the real ending of this game because yeah. you played on easy mode. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it just took away bonus stages, except to way later on in the game, I got Bug Hunter 1 and Bug Hunter 2. Yeah, I played those. If I'd have known, I would totally would have played this game on easy, because then maybe I could have finished it. I didn't finish what I was saying earlier, and I got sidetracked on Pumbaa Power Bottom. <laughs> That's my new Reddit name. <laughs> but once you get past the Hakuna Matata stage, you become Prince Simba. You become young adult Simba. And you get the claw attacks like we were talking about. You, be, you become the target audience for the Harry Potter series and <laughs> maybe Fifty Shades of Grey. Just the young adult. The I young adult. Know, I don't think Fifty Shades of Grey is young adult, is it? I think it's like... Um, I, think I mean, it's I think like, it's written they, in a style that eighth graders would get, but <laughs> the, the content... Um, only when it's read by Gilbert Godfrey. We'll yes. Do it. <laughs> That's a good clip for the show notes. I'll have in the show notes. But I only made it to the second to last stage as young adult Simba going through these like lava tubes. God, that was the hard, I think the hardest level in the game. I remember I died, I died a lot. Once I became adult Simba, very rarely did I die from my health bar being depleted. It was stuff that was just instant death. Strictly boredom. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I stopped, honestly, because I was just tired of the game yeah because you have to fight through of course it's just a horrible boss gun the first half of the lava tubes you know just trying you have to run there are too many leopards and bats and things like that so it's not a literal boss gauntlet no because i just, got really worried i was like you gotta fight the fucking gorilla again <laughs> it's just a ton of enemies and until you get to a part where you have to jump up and knock stalactites i don't know what's on the bottom most of the top stalactites stalagmites. on top i think Somebody else the M, the, the capital M, right? I don't know. <laughs> and you knock one down, and it'll crash through, and then you ride on it through lava and try to hit bats out of the air. Oh, and that sounds awful. It is awful. <laughs> it is very awful. And then you get to the part where there are four lava geysers that you have to just... Because they're constantly boulders just falling throughout the level. This happens a few times where they're just like... That's where I think it's designed to be difficult because they're like, you know what, fuck you. They're just random boulders raining down from the sky. And it's just, they kind of follow you. It's, they're hard to avoid. You just have to keep moving really fast. Yeah. Because young Simbo, that level after Mufasa dies. Spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that it's just, the level is still difficult on its own and they just add in raining boulders for no reason. I don't like to talk about that level because that's where I learned, quote unquote, learned how to roll. And this that is, porcupine. Oh, mm. This again goes back to the, the controls in this game are awful. They are awful the fucking worst Mm -hmm. because knowing that I could make Simba roll, but not being able to do it by simply here's how you're supposed to do it. Press down while Simba's running. I could not roll for fucking anything. Did you have that problem too? You only get Simba up to a speed that he's running to roll very few times in the game. So knowing that's what you're supposed to do when there's no other time for you to do it really before then I looked it up on Game Facts because I oh, yeah. I was just running and like, oh, yeah. I couldn't jump. I oh, had to go yeah. to Game Facts to figure out that oh roll yeah. or I scroll through. How do you roll? Yeah, I did. No, I did it. the same exact thing so. because yeah, you're being chased by a boulder down this very narrow tunnel, and there is a porcupine, doom, just right there mm-hmm. in the in the way. And just like you said, you can't jump over it. Obviously, in earlier levels, what you did to take care of them was stop, roar at them, and they would show you their underbelly. <laughs> their, <laughs> their soft, soft belly. Soft hand underbelly. <laughs> but no, through this one particular tiny part of the level, you absolutely have to roll through. Before, I was trying to just, I'd just take the hit and keep running. And that split second for you to take a hit, the boulder will get you instant death. Yeah. You can't stop and roar, boulder will get you instant death. So, oh, God. I didn't, I, t- Tyler, I didn't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. 
More rare than us both liking a game is us both adamantly disliking a game. I don't think I'd ever play this game again. No reason to. No reason to. <laughs> well, after the lava level, which the four geysers, the boulders constantly raining down, there's no end. It just comes to these four geysers. So I stood there for a long time Are trying they a to boss avoid- or something. It's just, I guess, a testament to your patience because then I would stand there, avoid boulders, nothing happens. I'd backtrack thinking I missed something. I come back. What you're supposed to do is you just wait and eventually a boulder will clog a geyser and you just wait until all four geysers are plugged. <sighs> like I waited, all four were plugged and I was walking around, nothing was happening. Then you have to jump on one and the lava shoot you up and that's how you get to scar all four were plugged is my first uh fanfic <laughs> that i'm gonna write <laughs> it's a ninja turtles fanfic all four were plugged <laughs> nice fan art we haven't been good at fan art in a while let's do that <laughs> man that's just another testament to the game giving you no fucking indication of what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. that's it right there the fact that you had to just sit there and wait with no indication that mm-hmm. you're supposed to wait in a game, particularly a level where boulders are falling from the sky and you're being rushed, rushed, rushed. Yep. And then all of a sudden you're supposed to completely do the opposite. Yep. How are you supposed to know that? Looking through my notes and all these other games that maybe I didn't like them, but I thought were acceptable. How was this 66? I, How is this better than Mega Man X3 I know, and Populous? I know. I felt like such a shithead when I was playing this game because I was like, I cannot believe I didn't give Mega Man X3 just glowing comments. Because now I'm playing a game that is ranked higher than it is, and it is awful. I think this game is worse than Jungle Strike. Yeah, I would rather play Jungle Strike. And it's, what, f- it's five spaces higher than Jungle Strike? I think... Pocky and Rocky 2 was definitely better than this. I, yeah, 100% agree. I didn't mind Pocky and Rocky 2 at all. Oh, I liked it, yeah. So I think that was the last this last game I have that I can say I liked. And then before that, I get Shadowrun 77, <laughs> looking through all my shit. <laughs> oh, man. Before that... Uh, uh, <laughs> you notoriously do man, not like video games. Man, I don't like... <laughs> you think you... God, you... People must think I'm just a ball of hate. <laughs> Cave story before that? <laughs> That's not even on the list. <laughs> You're not a ball of hate. You're a cloud of negativity. You're like Galactus. Sun race? Sparkster? God, what did I like before? Sunset Riders? Oh, that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Bomberman. 80. <laughs> we can always go back to Super Bomberman. Yeah. Two. Two. Okay, then the scar level. Yeah, this, I'm assuming is the last level. Yeah, because I didn't play. You so immediately fight it. Scar. Like as soon as that level starts, you fight Scar. Cool, get it which, over with. Well, you fight Scar for the first time. Oh. So you fight him, and he's pretty frustrating because he can block. So you'll get a few hits before he starts blocking, and then his counter is pretty brutal. So he can tear your health bar to shreds very quickly. He, he is your uncle. Yep, it's, <laughs> it's true. He's like this very old lion by now, and you know Simba's in his prime, but whatever. <laughs> so he's difficult to fight the first time, but when you are able to subdue him, he runs off. And then, of course, you have to go through an ant-like maze of hyena dens okay, to where there are like five or six different holes before you can enter one, you have to kill all the hyenas on the screen. So if you choose the wrong one and try to backtrack, kill Plus, all the hyenas just to be all over clear, again. If you choose the wrong hole. Choose the wrong hole. You, you have gotta to do it all over again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure that's a, that's. You got to pay the troll toll. If you want to enter this boy's hole. <laughs> Hopefully, I can find that for the show notes. <laughs> oh, I hope. But of course, I mean. God, I killed so many fucking hyenas. Much easier as adult Simba just to smack them with your claws. But still, like, every time you make a mistake, fight for hyenas. And it's just trial and error until I found the right combination of hyena den tunnels to go through. (laughs) (laughs) Until you reach Scar again. And when you fight Scar on the top of Pride Rock, he's invincible. You cannot kill Scar by punching him and fighting (laughs) him. You just get a game over screen? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he killed me a whole lot. Before I finally figured out, you have to stay true to the movie and you have to lure him to the edge and then do the throw maneuver and throw him off the edge. There's a throw maneuver? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's very difficult to perform. You have to wear him down to where he starts panting and then like get over him and press X in a certain way. But you you throw him. X in a certain way. Well, you have to press X 
while you're on him in a certain way. Uh, you have to gently, you have to caress you have to, X. You have, to, you have to romance X. You have to so get it on feels top safe. of your uncle, is what you're saying. And press X. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the direction that you throw him is the opposite. Because the game you tend to play from, I guess, right to left. That's when the game naturally usually scrolls. Left to right. Left, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it usually goes left to right. But you throw him in the opposite way. And Pride Rock is situated in a way that is not, it's not the natural throwing direction. You'll always be throwing Scar further away from the edge. Unless you unless lure you turn around. You lure him to the edge and then jump to the other side of him and then try to throw him. As opposed to fighting to the edge and then just throwing him. So it's frustrating. You can't beat him unless you do that. I don't know why they have so many other moments that aren't true to the movie, why it can't be like you beat him down, then there's a cutscene of you throwing him off. Why you have to do it in that way it was very frustrating to me. They wanted it to be hard. Uncle Walt. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> my favorite part of the game is... Turning it off. Well, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. no, that's my second part of the game. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll save, I'll save my favorite part of the game for an achievement. Okay, good deal. Uh, I guess... We didn't hit on the gorilla very much when we talk about the horrible gorilla fight. Let's talk about it. Uh, you get to the end of Hakuna Matata, and there's this large gorilla that has his back to you, and it looks like he's doing something secretive. And you get <laughs> close to him, he throws coconuts over his shoulder. If you get even more close mm-hmm. to him, he does like this karate, this guile style chop that has it a very, very long. Like, yeah, it's an immediate action, too. <laughs> yeah, like, you it can't. Is, it'll straight interrupt you. Yeah, like if it hits you, you're dead. Try to jump over him. He does a diagonal up chop. Yeah, like just like like just snatches your ass out of the sky. You can jump on coconuts and try to like you can hit him right as he's throwing a coconut, oh, but it's very very difficult. Because what I did was I waited until he like eventually he'll throw coconuts and then he'll like put his butt in the air. Yep, he went, stands up, slams his fist into the ground as he bends over with his butt in the air. Maybe he's the power bottom, but. If you're on the ground at the same time he strikes the ground... That's why you're fighting him. He's Puma's rival. <laughs> Done. Puma wants him annihilated out of the fucking jungle. There's only room for one power bottom in this jungle. <laughs> and it's this motherfucking warthog. But a lot of times, like, you know, he slams on the ground, bent over, then you can jump on him and take away his health bar. He's pretty frustrating, and you have to jump on him seven times before he dies. Not only that, you have to chase him. Because when you hit him, he runs away mm-hmm. and starts, like, climbing up ledges and shit. And you have to, like, go hunt him down. He can run away off screen and Still hit and, you, and hit you. With yeah. coconuts, yeah. Well, coconuts, or if you're standing on the same ground whenever he <laughs> strikes the ground, like, I wouldn't even be able to see him and then... I'm dead because he strikes the ground and you automatically lose half your health bar. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. The way you position, I found it frustrating. Like, I guess wherever he goes is random because he would go to like the edge of the ledge where I was supposed to jump and throw coconuts in the other direction. Like I was supposed to be over there, uh-huh. but I couldn't get to him. So then he would just get up, pound the ground, I'm dead. So I just had to keep moving and replaying it until he would get in positions where I could jump on the coconuts and then jump on him when he bent over. Did you use, yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> did you use frames of invulnerability like a motherfucker? Because I did. Mm, not oh, really. Man, so there were times in the game where I was just praying I would get hit because I was like, I knew I had this like four second window where I'd be invulnerable and I'd just fucking just speed through as much of the game as I could. And then like I get to a part that was slower and I'd be like, okay, I gotta take it careful, gotta take it easy. And then I'd see a big group of enemies and I'd just run at them. Just so I can get hit and get those frames of invulnerability, so I just run past them. What did you think? And I think it was the Hakuna Matata level again, where you had to climb the waterfall with the logs. Awful. That were coming awful, down. Awful. You're climbing oh. up a waterfall. There are these five columns of logs that are coming down the waterfall at varying speeds. And what you have to do is you have to jump from log to log mm-hmm. to go up this waterfall mm-hmm. onto a ledge that you don't even know is there. Um, it's another one of those things where it's just like, I don't know what to do. There's no indication that I'm supposed to go up here. Mm-hmm. So for the longest time, I'm just riding logs and, and just exploring <laughs> around. Well, finally, I was just like, there is no way I'm supposed to go up, right? Like, there's no way I'm supposed to go up because that seems like it's going to be really fucking impossible. 
It took me a very, very long time. Like that was a rage quit moment. I could see the ledge at the top, <laughs> and then the I fell off all the way to the bottom. The fucking worst. That was when Meg begged me to quit because <laughs> I just I made like the cone heads, <laughs> and then just like paced around my house. Because <laughs> oh man, normally Simba can grab on the ledge of cliffs and pull himself over. You cannot do that on the logs. You have to land perfectly square yeah, on the know. top of those logs. Which sucks because they've trained you through the whole game that you're supposed to grab onto a ledge by positioning Simba's face like three pixels away from the ledge. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden that's completely different. Yep. You have to center Simba's body right above the log. It's completely different. You're right. Mm -hmm. Than any other ledge in the game. The design is just so poor. <sighs> Shit so like that poor. made this game awful. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I thought it looked and sounded great. It did not look and sound great enough to put it at 66 mm -hmm. on this list. I can see this being on the list, but it needs to be in the 90s or 80s. Mm -hmm. I agree. If the controls had just been super tight, it would have been a pretty good game. Keep it at the difficulty it's at. Oh, just, yeah. The controls can just make it super efficient, super tight. Yeah, you had a good game. I agree. You could even forgive the fact that it gives you no direction. Because then, if the controls are tighter, it's going to be more fun to play. And you're going to be exploring and trying different things isn't going to be so much of a chore. Mm -hmm. The whole game did just really feel like a chore. It felt like a chore. It sucked when you died because it's like, I know it's specifically in that level we were talking about where the boulder's chasing you down the tunnel and you have to roll in the porcupine. Mm -hmm. When I finally did that, I was like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that again. I better not die throughout the rest mm -hmm. of this level. Or I'm may just go uh, drown myself. <laughs> Hope we got five star reviews or that's just it. This is just it. I've got achievements. You got achievements? I do. I came up with mine, so I'm good. What you got? My first one is Donkey Conqueror. Nice. So it beat the gorilla. Nice. Defeat the number two power bottom in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one is Wildebeestier, which is beat the stampede level without dying. Oh, okay. I like that. We could take it a step further or a step lateral and go wildebeestiary. <laughs> we have to defeat all the enemies in the game. That's pretty good. Every enemy in the game. <laughs> Here's my real achievement. And what you have to do is, as Cub Simba, you have to leap on a lizard. And when Elton John pops out of the bottom of the screen and screams toasty, you have to press down and start. <laughs> <laughs> then you unlock... Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If that happened in the game, I would probably feel completely different about it. If Elton John popped out of the bottom of the screen and yelled, Toasty! Toasty. Move it to the top ten. <laughs> Tiny dancer! <laughs> top <Don't> ten! <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. Before, oh. I have assembled, my wife said, a very tangential quiz for you. Oh, it's quiz time. Simple seven questions. It's quiz time. In order for you to really understand this... In the movie, The Lion King, who voiced young Simba? JTT, dog. Damn right. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. So this is a Jonathan Taylor Thomas filmography and TV quiz. Okay. I feel good about this. Feel good about this? Maybe. All right. There are seven questions. Not the longest He's quiz. only been like two things, so it's this it should be pretty easy. I had to dig pretty deep. <laughs> In 1995, JTT played blank in Tom and Huck. <laughs> um... The slave? <laughs> in, or, in, in word, Jim? <laughs> uh, I guess he played Huck. He played Tom Sawyer. Damn it. Off to a rough start. <laughs> Much like the Lion King. He's got that bad boy exterior. You'd think he was like, he's, Huck <laughs> he's Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> nope. Can, straight lace Tom Sawyer. Can you get that as a tattoo? JTT, <laughs> he's got that bad boy exterior. It's just a tattoo of his face. <laughs> Look at that badass. <laughs> JTT was the voice of this wooden boy in the movie and video game, The Adventures of Blank. Pinocchio. Pinocchio is correct. In the 1991 smash hit show, Home Improvement, mm -hmm. JTT played the role of Blank Taylor. Man, this is fucked up because I was just thinking about this today. <laughs> I was like, I can remember the other two boys' fucking names, but I could not remember his fucking name. And I know Nikki can hear me right now. I know she's just like dying because she fucking knows the answer to this question. <laughs> I can almost hear them. I can, Meg and Nikki are talking. I can almost hear the answer, but I barely can't. Is, is it Randy? 
Randy is correct. Randy! <laughs> God! <laughs> so two for three. In 1995, JTT did a stunning performance alongside legendary comedian Chevy Chase. Man of the house. Man of the house. <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> Bonus point for... I didn't have to finish the question. <laughs> The rest the of that lost was community episode. <laughs> God, that would be so good. <laughs> be badass. You know he's not doing anything. He'll come on. Uh, and this 1998 seasonal classic somehow left out of the Criterion Collection. JTT plays Jack, a college student trying to get home and impress a girl and get a Porsche. In this movie, I'll be home for blank. That's a 1998 seasonal film. Mm-hmm. I don't know the answer to this, but common sense would say Christmas. Christmas is correct. <laughs> I was giving you a little bit on that. JTT reunited with this fellow actor in 2011's Last Man Standing. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it is a TV show. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> he reunited Tim Allen? Tim Allen is correct. Nice. <laughs> All right, last one. Okay. Some say it was the power of JTT's guest performance in this 2002 through 2005 sitcom that actually killed John Ritter. Scrubs? Mm-mm. I'll give you another guess. So you got to narrow it down. It's a sitcom. That had John Ritter in 2002 it? 2002 to 2005, John Ritter, and he died during its airing. 2002, 2005. Um, that Jonathan Taylor Thomas was in? He guest performed in like four episodes. And kill John Ritter with the power of his acting. I don't know. Allegedly. With the power of his acting. <laughs> eight Simple Rules. Oh. Shortened from Eight Simple Rules for Daddy, My Teenage Daughter. I forgot that was a show. I, I didn't see much of that. Mm-hmm. Still, I'm pretty proud of myself. I think That's I, I pretty feel good. Like I did pretty That's good. pretty good. Pretty good. Because JTT trivia is pretty obscure. It's pretty <laughs> obscure. Good thing Devin Sawa wasn't actually Simba, because we would have had the Devin Sawa quiz, and that would have been way worse. Yeah, that would have been. Would have been Little Giants and Idle Hands yeah, questions. That that's hard. It. <laughs> Second breakfast, please now go through all of Devin Sawa and Jonathan Taylor Thomas's <laughs> acting credentials. Tyler. Yes, Dave. I had more fun taking that quiz than I did playing the Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of fun recording tonight. Mm-hmm, I hope mm-hmm. you feel the same. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to take it down. I want to ask you a very important question that we that we normally cover on the show, and that is, you will take a game and you will assign it a beard mm. based on how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. And from the talks that we've had, I'm expecting a really horrific beard for Lion King. Would I be Would I be right? What What kind of beard well, would you give this game? You have to think about it. I give it a three swirl handlebar mustache with a beard that comes down to three points. And all of this occurs naturally. <laughs> okay. Which means it's very frustrating. Mm-hmm. It's nearly impossible to do. And even if you do it, it doesn't look good. No one's really going to appreciate it unless they're very hardcore about it. Okay. It's also very stylized. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Whether that's for better or worse. It's got good sounds and <laughs> graphics. <laughs> but playing with that mustache beard combo <laughs> just doesn't work. If you were to give this game, I don't know. A pair of glasses, maybe? Mm-hmm, well, mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think you'd give this game? Like, I've mentioned this pair of glasses before. I think I've actually assigned it to anything. So this is a reproduction. So it's not real. It's something you'd buy at Toys R Us. A reproduction pair of Jordy LaForge's glasses. Okay. So somebody might be like, man, I love Star Trek. Mm-hmm. I love Jordy LaForge. I bet buying these glasses will be really fun to play with. Uh-huh. And you get them on, and they're just like light and shitty, and the color comes off onto your hands. But you're just thinking, but I love the show so much, so surely I'm going to love this toy. Also, I'm blind, and I thought I could see by putting these on. Yep. <laughs> yep. And you do You can't. You can't. I should have mentioned with The Lion King. It's The Lion King. It's like it's a kid's game. It's way too hard to be a kid's game. A kid's going to think, oh, you know, oh, yeah, I love The Lion King. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We're running a little long, but I do want to ask you, because I haven't yet. Did you like The Lion King? Nope. The movie, when it came out? Yep. Okay. Because I was in that awkward stage where I'd liked The Lion King, but I didn't want to admit it because I felt like I was just a little too old Mm. to be liking the the Disney cartoon. You were in seventh grade? Yeah, I think I was in seventh or eighth, maybe. I was. I think I was. I think Aladdin was out when I was in sixth grade, which I loved Aladdin. Oh. And that I felt like was the last Disney movie 
that I could really be like, yeah, that was awesome. That was badass. Mm -hmm. And we saw it like the end of my fifth grade year. We watched the video in class of Lion King. And that was the first time I saw it. I really liked it. Anybody anybody call us? Yeah, but it's saying by call us. Hopefully. Don't let me down, Lord Mike. Don't let me down. I don't know who you are, and I don't know if you know who I am, but you keep calling my telephone number, and my name is Elizabeth Morris. If you want to talk to me, you'll have to call my. You have to call me again. <laughs> what is what is going on? I don't know. How is our Google uh, voice about calling people? Old ladies, I don't know. I'm kind of concerned. It's, that... it's strictly calling old ladies. <laughs> I don't. We're not faking this, people. I don't no, understand. No, I don't know what's going on. When I listened to this message earlier today, which, by the way, what we just listened to is 25 seconds, but apparently this woman never turned her phone off, so it's just the rest is just three minutes of silence. <laughs> like you can hear a TV in the background every now and then. Well, I don't know. I think maybe someone's hacked our Google Voice. Yep. And uh, they're calling old ladies with it. <laughs> so it wasn't Mary, but we've got a new caller. <laughs> if I was to call her talk to her, you'll, you'll have to call her again. Uh, we have a second call. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Lord Mike of Purdue here. Uh, this week's Would You Rather. Um, before I get to the would you rather, though, uh, if you could, uh, I, I think Mary was trying to call me instead of you guys. I, I was trying to find an escort service, and she was supposed to dial my number back, and I guess she got your guys by mistake. Not sure how that happened, but uh, if you could forward that over to me, I would uh, I would appreciate it. Uh, I need to figure out who I need to pay for last night. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for that, too. All right, this week's would you rather brought to you by New Grape. Would you rather, and I'm going to reference some 90s uh, culture with the, the SNES, uh, would you rather be trapped in a 90s video game, like poltergeist, poltergeist sucked into the screen, trapped in a 90s video game or a 90s television show? I'm going to say I would rather be trapped in a 90s television show, that television show being, and, and you guys can pick... Um, Whichever one you guys decide to, you know, please give reference. But my 90s television show would definitely be The Secret World of Alex Mack. That way I could get a hold of Larissa Olenek before anybody else had a chance. So um, that's my answer. Look forward to you guys, and uh, keep up the good work. Talk to you soon. (laughs) Thank you for calling, Lord Mike. Tyler, did we have a conversation about Alex Mack on the show it's hard for me to remember because we talk about this show probably yeah, we talk more about it too. Than, than someone should. We talk about Chemical GC-161 <laughs> way too much. Also, yeah, Lord Mike, if you could stop calling old prostitutes from our Google voice <laughs> number, that would be great because they are getting pissed. And I'm glad to know you like gilfs so, so much. <laughs> but yeah, I guess, I mean, I can encourage the behavior. If anybody wants to call a prostitute and leave the return number as our Google voicemail, if you want to prank call people... <laughs> And be like, and then leave our Google voicemail as the callback number. Feel free. That number is 270 883 2555. If you want to write it on a bathroom wall, you can do that too. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a call from a creepy like Chris Hansen style to catch a predator. Just, girl, where you at? Micah's Would You Rather reminds me of two episodes I saw in the 90s. One, one of my favorite episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark, mm. the pinball wizard, yeah. where he gets stuck in the pinball God, machine it's forever fucked up and ever. I knew exactly where you were going with that. <laughs> and then I liked the show, and it was only on for a season. It was about somehow a sitcom family from the 50s got pulled out of their TV show and put in this neighborhood in the 90s, and it was their neighbor trying to deal with how strange and out of place they were. Hmm. Now I don't remember that one. Cause yeah, it was clear. It wasn't very popular. I remember, I remember seeing it. I remember sometimes it was in black and white, and sometimes it wasn't. And it was just it was it was strange. But I remember that I liked it. But I would probably have to say a '90s TV show. Which one in particular? Any in particular? Mm, 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 mm. Well, I could probably get back to the real world if I was in Family Matters, like late season Family Matters, when Stefan Urkel and Steve <laughs> Urkel are just breaking the. Breaking the laws of physics right. left and right. Uh-huh. 
So, I mean, surely once you get to that point, you can clone yourself, clone the cooler version of yourself, and I guess send him back to the real world. Post-shark jumping. Right, Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's a tough one, man, because you'd think I'd say video game, but I think it would be a lot more fun to be in a 90s television show. Like, I've always, as a kid, I always wanted to be on Double Dare. Always wanted to be on Double Mm. Dare. In fact, after Tadpog Prom, if we can arrange a Double Dare after party, (laughs) I am totally on board with that. In fact, that may be our first Kickstarter. Can we do a Kickstarter for a Double Dare party where we just recreate the physical challenge? We're going to need $500,000 to create Tadpog (laughs) Prom and Double Dare. And we want you to help. (laughs) Can you imagine the video for that? It's going to be great. So I would say... As long as I could just be on at least one episode of Double Dare, then that oh, that would have made my life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the calls we got. Okay. All the calls we got. Thank you for apologizing, Lord Mike. We appreciate it, and we're also sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're sorry. We got people to thank? We do. Let's see. For Facebook shares, Lord Mike, Nikki, Dennis, Nicole, probably Matt Barger, probably. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen after this episode. He's probably just going to be so depressed just listen to us <laughs> just shit on things. Hey, Matt, I'm sorry, man. I just got to be honest on Lion King. You know how it is. Just love just to listen to our show for an hour and a half every week just to hear us just shit all over things. Uh, for tweets, Lord Mike, Nicole. And after Nicole, we we mentioned her several times before she was on the show. Uh, Lord Mike started following her on Twitter. So uh-huh. since then, she's tried to... Step up her Twitter game. Oh, so wow. if anybody else wants to follow Nicole Nance on Twitter, which I guess she didn't think about it when she did it, is this is an awkward Twitter handle, but it's at Elosinleza. That's not that. Elosinleza? That's oh, that's easy. E L O C I N L E Z A H, which is her first name and middle name backwards and inverted. It's also the code to get the last level in Lion King. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> the, there is the code to level skipping and vulnerability Barry. is Barry. <laughs> yeah, B-A-R-R-Y. Yep. So Pro con- tip. <laughs> that one's on the house. <laughs> so kind words, John Turley, who always lets you know about how much he likes the show. Yep, thanks, John. Uh, Zach English, returned from Afghanistan. I believe unharmed. He didn't mention anything to me about having a loss of a limb or anything like that, so... Glad he's back and probably in one piece. Yeah, hopefully. I and hope so. Now he, internet was too slow in Afghanistan to listen to the show, so now he's been catching up like crazy and really enjoys it. So he'll hear this episode in about three months. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ashley Shake, our friend who lives in Japan, uh, sent me a message over Steam, which is his preferred method of communication for some reason. Uh, sent me a message saying how much he loved the Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 episode. Yes. So That's that was one of my favorites. Our fifth episode. Now we are on this is our forty first episode. Yeah. So if you're new to the show and haven't listened to the Ultimate Mortal Kombat three episode, I, I I'll have a link to it in the show notes. I, I strongly urge you listen to it. It's it's truly, I think, you at your funniest, Tyler. Hunt <laughs> Soul Blazer telling yeah, it horribly you came up awkward. With Shio marriage rapture. Like I still can't. I still think that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever talked about. You search for that on Google. We're 100% on that. Yeah. We're your top result for Shao Kahn Mary Draft. Matt filled us in on that. The time difference between here in Japan is 36 episodes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, we didn't have any five star reviews this week, so I'll be transparent. And I called Blake Woods. I was like, hey, man, it's been a while since you've been on the show or called into the show. Do you, you haven't listen? left a five star review? Just go live with a five star review. So he says he left one. It hasn't showed up yet, <laughs> but thank you for probably leaving us one. Zach as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, Zach also I text him like, hey, why don't you leave this one? He's like, oh, did you see that one? He, he, he. I was like, okay, uh, I'm assuming you left one then. Thanks. So as you can tell, we're pretty desperate for five-star reviews. Yep. Yep. I haven't logged into like, my mom's iTunes yet and <laughs> commented, so we're not super desperate yet, but we'll give you we'll give you free shit. Just give us more reviews. <laughs> what, you want more shitty books? I'll go buy more shitty books. I've got all the Goosebump books. I'll start giving those away in succession. Damn. For five star reviews. You sure about that? Have you checked how much they go for on Amazon? Nope. You might want to look because I was. I want to read all the old Shadowrun books mm-hmm. that apparently did not have many runs. Um, those are really fucking expensive. Like mm-hmm. the first one in that series. I shouldn't say really fucking expensive, but more than I'm willing to pay for a paperback book. It's like thirty dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't be surprised if your Goosebumps well, books are in that range. Well, my copy of Goosebumps number one, Welcome to Dead House, is held together by 
masking tape. <laughs> yes. I read awesome. that so much it fell apart. Wow. The rest of the books are in pretty pristine condition. <laughs> cool. I think Monster Blood might be a little tattered. Um, Monster Rain. Monster Rain. <laughs> and uh, the one where they go to the fair. I forget what that's called. I read that yeah, several times. I, can't, I read all of those. But Once Monster Blood got to like Monster Blood 5, those are those look brand fucking new. I didn't touch those. I just bought them and put them on the shelf. But that's it. That's all I got. Want to talk us off? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes or Stitcher so you don't miss the next episode. We'll be talking about IGN's number 65 ranked game, R Type 3. Yes. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Give the show a five star rating and write a review. You might get a coin or a shitty book or a <laughs> book that might be valuable on Amazon. I might send to you. We get enough of them. I, we want these fucking five star <laughs> reviews. We'll give you goosebump books. We'll give you books that are just held together by masking tape. <laughs> masking tape and like love. 1995 era masking tape. <laughs> don't worry, guys. We'll be back next week. In the meantime, if you can't wait for more Tadpog, feel free to visit us at tadpog.com. That's where the show notes are. Also, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash tadpog. You can see all the wonderful things that people are posting there. Um, it's a good time. Maybe you should check it out. You like the show? You probably like the Facebook page. That's all I'm saying. I also really, once again, plug Manpog. We don't talk about... There is Tyler at tadpog.com, Dave at tadpog.com. If you don't want to call in... Email us a question. Yeah. Or uh, tweet us a question. Uh, we're on Twitter at Tadpog underscore podcast. We've got a decent amount of people, but I just want to make sure we have hour, an hour and a half range. They might not muse over stuff and go on weird tangents as much as we do. It's true. And for anyone new listening, Manpog is Meg and Nikki play old games. It's a special episode we want to do where our wives sit in and do the show and they answer questions that people send in. But in order for them to do that, people need to send in questions for them. Mm -hmm. They can be game-related. They can be anything related. Any, really anything. They're both very... They're smarter than us. So Quiet. you can ask for their advice, and it'll be... They'll give you good advice. Yeah. More than likely. Or they won't. And yeah. Or they you won't. may die from it. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know anything about Dave and I that's just super personal? That, that stuff that's too taboo for us to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll probably talk about it. You know, that stuff. Tyler. Yes, Dave. Our intro song. Mm. We don't have a special guest host to ask. You've ingrained so. in me Bioshock style, like, would you kindly? <laughs> <laughs> 20 years from now, I'm going to call you. Or I'm gonna. Ha what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to your kid and be like, hey, Tyler Jr. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Tyler Wayne Wayne. <laughs> I'm going to have him do it and see what you do. <laughs> Our intro song, Tyler, is Moves by Sycamore Drive. A link to that track can be mm. found on the show mm. notes at tadpog.com. That's show, man. Fucking Lion King. <laughs> Fucking Lion King. Fucking Lion King. <laughs> Fucking Catalina Wine Mixer. <laughs> Hakuna Ma not going to work here anymore. <laughs> Hakuna not going to play this shit. <laughs> You just got tad-pogged. <laughs>